Hey guys, thanks for watching. I wanted to do a quick update video on one of the improvements that I made to the system. So you probably remember last time we ran this, we were using our little charge timer here to balance out how how long the system was running against how much voltage we were getting in from the sunlight to make sure those uh, the charge and the batteries didn't get depleted too much. Um, I had tried to run it through one of these smart battery protects, but the inverter, I guess this constricts the, the current flow through there, and this inverter has a safety in it that if it's not getting enough current, will just, um, it basically will cut itself off and that little yellow light will pop on and we weren't able to get it to run with just one. So I had a theory, um, or that, that was my theory, the first time I tried this to why it wouldn't work. I'll roll that clip now. So I think what's happening is as the the inverter kicks on and starts pulling current through the battery protect, this uh, the battery protect constricts the current pulling through there somehow and causes uh, this inverter to read like it has a thinner gauge wire running to it and so it throws up that signal. I've got a idea for how to work around that that I'm going to be doing in a future video. My theory was correct and here is my fix. So I went back and figured if it's getting a little bit of current through one but it's constricting it, maybe if I run it through two of the smart battery protects it'll get enough current for this thing to uh, be happy and it'll keep running. So I've got this one pulling its current off battery number two in the system and I've got this one right here getting current from battery number three in the system and basically this pulls all of our positive current from the batteries through these two battery protects these low voltage cutoffs and takes that to the inverter so why do we even bother with all this if we've got our charger right here well this thing is a it's an acceptable workaround you can certainly use it if uh, but you're still ultimately eyeballing it you almost have to do it on a day-by-day -day basis come outside and think about okay how much sunlight am I gonna get how much water does this pulling how, how how much can I run it with these right here if they work right we should be able to just plug the car charger in walk away and rest assured that when this voltage falls well, and you can program these things to cut off at any voltage you want. I have them set at 11.8 volts because that's about 45% of the charge remaining in these batteries at that point when they drop to 11.8 volts. And that's right around where you want to cut it out, cut off the, the discharge to maximize battery longevity. So if these two things are working right, these two battery protects are working right, then we should be able to just plug in our car charger, walk away, and when this system falls below 11.8 volts, these will cut off the flow from the batteries to the inverter, and when, it go, when the solar panels charge them back up to above 12.8 volts in the batteries, these things actually reconnect current flow, um, and the whole system will kind of turn back on. And what we're trying to, to work, the, the end goal that we're working toward here is a a system where I can get home on Friday night from work, uh, the car battery is fully discharged, we can plug it in and walk away and not think about it. We don't have to kind of eyeball the sun and look at how much sunlight we're going to get or, or guess and check like we would with our timer. We can run all the current through our battery protect and this will turn, this, turn the inverter on and off and essentially turn the car charger on and off as is the charge in the battery stays within that healthy range. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it now. I've got my multimeter hooked up to my battery terminals. And when this reading falls to somewhere around, I've got these set to 11.8 volts is the cutoff. So when this falls to somewhere around 11.7 to 11.9, um, our inverter should kick off. Uh, unfortunately, it's at 13.0 13 now. So they've got a good bit of charge in them, so it'll probably take a little while. But I'm going to go ahead and shoot this video, and we'll do a time lapse. And hopefully, 
these things do their job and when that reads 11.8 or so this inverter will, will kick off And you'll notice immediately as we turn on the car charger that number on the multimeter drops from 13 to 12 that's because when you put batteries under a load they give you a lower readout sorry I'm adjusting my camera here they give you a lower, lower readout um, batteries have a lower applied voltage when they're under a load, and that's why you saw that number drop straight from 13 to 12. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> That's freaking sweet. All right, so we saw our voltage jump from 11 uh, 6 back up to 12.1 there. That is because this inverter shut off and when that load um, went off those batteries, you effectively get a higher reading on there and now the solar panels will start charging the batteries back up you can see the car charger uh, has shut off it's we're not even getting that yellow fault light because voltage has been completely cut off to this inverter by that smart battery protect um, that is uh, the automatic voltage regulation removes all the guesswork from the equation of using the, the timer right there. It takes us one step closer to the final version of this system where you would be able to plug your EV in and walk away and the voltage and eventually the temperature too will be completely self-regulated. Park it anywhere, you don't need an outlet, you don't need a to worry about your batteries getting depleted and this will keep your EV topped off for you. I will be doing a probably another little video showing the charge going back up in the system and showing these things automatically reconnecting your inverter and automatically turning your car charger back on when it goes back above that program voltage I think it's 12.8 but that is pretty cool okay um one other thing one other little adjustment that I've made as you guys probably remember here let me pull the tarp off got a little bit of rain during the test today you guys probably remember from the first video how I just had all the wires and the connectors uh, tossed on top here you can still see the little ad uh, adhesive left from the Eterna bond where we I just taped them wherever because I hadn't figured it out well I've got them all running in parallel now and kind of looped into a nice tight coil that's just scotch taped on there now, but I'm going to probably use a turnabond over that and paint it black so it blends in a lot better. 
but this has freed up a lot of real estate right here and we've got another patch on the front that's just kind of wasted space right now and I was looking at it and we don't have there's no way we, we can't take one of these pre-assembled panels and fit them on there they're all too big to fit but I think I can figure out how to build my own panels that'll add another maybe 150 watts using this area right here and the area in front and that'll really be a game changer putting an extra 150 watts on here and just finding creative ways to use these little patches of roof real estate that you have left that you can't fit a conventional panel on here if we can make our own panels that are any size we want to um, we can get enough power for this system to really do some impressive stuff okay so it looks like we've nailed the voltage self-regulation um, stay tuned next weekend we are going to attempt uh, our own custom size and shape panel manufacture and thanks for tuning in